all roads lead to Canada. I'm just really, really grateful that God used our pain as a pivot point. The enemy wants to distract you with yeah. things that are just nonsensical. They've got nothing yeah. to do with kingdom, nothing to do with purpose, nothing to do with people, yeah. nothing to do with growth, nothing. We have this entitlement that God has to, God is here to serve us. Yeah. God is not here to serve us. Hello, Dream Team. Welcome back to our podcast. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, beautiful people, to another incredible installment of Here's a Thought with the Max. My name is Lerato Macheta. And I am Petola Macheta. My phone is going off because I didn't put on silent. <laughs> and now I'm just, okay, right, sorry. Property hey. man, property <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm, a property. I'm, busy. I'm busy, you understand how you yeah. are back? I'm doing fantastic. Listen, How are you? you? Are regal and beautiful and all things great. Guys, Guys my friend Maddie. Lucy bought me this beautiful shacket jacket coat for my birthday. I Shout out to you, it. Lucy. Shout out, Lucy. Love you, friend. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're here. We're here. What are we talking about? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous, a little bit excited yeah. to have this conversation. I'm not quite sure like where it's gonna go. Okay. But there are a couple of things that we need to let you guys in on. Mm. And we thought today is the day. And you know what I love about this conversation, baby? It speaks to your favorite verse. <laughs> Many are the plans in a in man's, man's heart. heart. But only the Lord's purpose will prevail. Yeah. As yeah. you like to say, we plan and God loves. Yeah. 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 So, babe, where do you want to start? A surrender conversation. Surrender. You know. Yeah. Surrendering to the will of God. Yeah. And that's where we've been. We've been on a journey, guys, as yeah. you all know. Bon, guys, grace of God, she's almost seven months old. <laughs> Unbelievable. She's, she's big but small. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. She's, yeah. <laughs> Big but small. She's big. Um, she's feisty. She's got such a big spirit. And she's got an attitude. Attitude. We don't talk about. I remember. Curve. I remember when um, our dear friends uh, Gabelo and Gail came to visit us. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gail said, "You know, children. We might think that she's a child, but the spirit man doesn't have an age. Ooh. So when we speak." Um, declare scripture to her when we, you know, we should, they, they've been encouraged, they were encouraging us to speak scripture in her ear, whisper scripture in her, declare scripture on her life. And, you know, they were saying that her spirit man is able to receive it. Yeah. So that was very profound yeah. for us. We're so blessed to have good friends. We are. We, we are. Really good friends. Yeah, okay. No lives. So <clears throat> I would say since really the beginning of our marriage, yeah. I was having conversations with my wife about leaving SA. I was like, baby, there's a whole world out there. Yeah. I want us to go and explore it. I want us to go and see the world, especially for our kids, yeah. you know, to not just feel like SA is the be all and end all. I used to say to her that I want my kids to be global citizens, you know, to always know that they're from South Africa, but really see the world. I'm not quite sure what this was informed by. I lived abroad when I was younger, um, traveled a lot. New York, New York. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend that used every time I walked in, he yeah, <laughs> but yeah. you know, um, uh, I don't know if it was informed by that, but I really felt really strongly about uh, going abroad. This is before we had kids, you mm. know, going abroad, um, living there, exploring and seeing what was out there. And my wife. So before we get into your wife, I think we take for granted <laughs> that people, as much as we started this channel about four years ago, yeah. there are new people on our platform, it's right? Four years. I think it's four years, my love. We started wow. 2020. No, we started 2021. So it's three years. Yeah. Okay. Three years. Okay. So yeah. I realized that we have some new faces. Hello, new faces. Hello, What's new studies. Welcome. Um, so Lerato's background, baby, you and your family moved to, your dad was studying in the yeah. States in and New in New York and yeah. you left South Africa when you were one. Yeah, yeah. when I was one. When yeah. you were one. So um, a bit of your childhood was spent in Brooklyn. Well, not Brooklyn. <laughs> New York. <laughs> New, York, York. New York. And that, York, that York. I believe that that's what informed you having that um, desire to, Possibly. Want to Possibly. explore the world. Yeah. You know, 
looking at my story no, i context I, con, no i love context, context because people are just like why why what were you yeah. doing in this in america like were you sure. working there you know so with me i grew up in sosh soshanguve block f chief 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 <laughs> by the way chief 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 by the way guys Chavito. it's a whistle my wife when she goes chief 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 that's a whistle <laughs> So I grew up in Sashanguve yeah. then you know I grew up in Pretoria my entire life so for me I had never entertained the the idea of wanting to leave Pretoria let alone leave the country yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. let alone leave Gauteng yeah. and when my husband brought it up to me about 10 years ago I think when we got two years after we got married, Lerat is like, we're going. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to flip burgers. One, where are we going? Two, what are we going to do? Yeah. Three, do you have a plan? It's like, we'll figure it out when we get there. <laughs> Let's. But baby, what was the, the motivation then was that you just wanted us to explore? Yeah. Look, our life was just beginning. Yeah. And there was a part of me that was like, before we get kids, before we, we, we really like, I'd, what's the word with roots? I'd, it's not dig roots, but as long before our roots are like established, mm -hmm. like, let's go, let's see what is out there and available yeah. to us. And then fast forward to, I think about six years ago. Yeah. You brought up the conversation again to say, babe. I mean, I was bringing it up every two years. Yeah, so. you're just yeah. like, babe, let's let's go. I'm like, yeah. Lerato. By this time, we've got two kids. I'm like, Abuti, Riakai, Rulei Rang. Yeah. I don't want to be, I don't want to be, get to wherever we're going and be homeless yeah. there. And we parked the conversation and then fast forward to about three years ago. Yeah, it was three years ago. Three years ago. My husband comes and he says, I know where we're going. Yeah. I say, I know where we're going. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a little bit of a plan. Yeah. Right. I know yeah. where we're going. I've <laughs> done the research. Yeah. Babe. Come check it out. Boom, boom, boom. I can't tell you exactly how I landed. I don't remember how I landed on this place. Yeah. But I came to her and I was like, we're going to Canada. And she was like, Canada? <laughs> What, what in Canada? Canada? But remember, yeah. I mean, this is the nature of men and women relationships, right? So a man comes and he says, baby, this is what we are doing. And she goes, why? Explain, make it make sense. Yeah. I've made peace with that. I'm okay with that. So I then came with the plan. And I was like, babe, this is where we're going. I've looked into it. Immigration, everything, jobs. Uh, other places are keep, are doing everything to keep people out. These guys have got their doors open. They're like, come in. And she, for the first time, she went, huh. Hmm. So a lesson, gents. Mm -hmm. Don't stop If trying. you want to present something to your wife, yeah. do it properly. Mm. Go away. Do your research. Show her the numbers. Show her the vision. Don't just take it for granted that, ah, no, just. And then you're going to turn around and say, she doesn't want me to lead here. You see, no, come on. Yeah. Just you know, put in the work. Yeah. And I mean, when you said Canada, I was like, okay, all I know about Canada is that their flag is red and white. And, and, they've, got a, and they've got a maple and leaf. Yeah. And it is cold, guys, yeah. like minus 40 degrees. It yeah. snows, right? Yeah. But my heart had really softened to the idea of immigrating. And, but at the time, I think we were also in the thick of load shedding. <laughs> The, we, we were, there was a lot of encouragement. There was a lot of encouragement. There's a lot of encouragement, but yeah. our stance was always that we are not running away from something, but we are running towards something. Holy. So we wanted to obviously give our kids um, global exposure. Yeah. And uh, we started speaking to people. We started reaching oh. out to people in Canada. I just went on a whim. I started DMing people. Yeah. Boosie Global. Hello, Boosie. Yeah. Boosie's yeah. amazing. She's a South African living in Canada and she's been giving people information on what it's like to immigrate to Canada. She's absolutely, absolutely amazing. And um, I DMed a few people to say, guys, listen, this is what my husband and I are planning to do. Um, what is life like 
in Canada. And guys, I mean, to the point where we've literally got a community yeah. in Canada because we had meetings after meetings after meetings. Yeah. We spoke to South Africans. We spoke to Canadians. Everybody's excited about us coming over. Yeah. We're keeping it under wraps, right? Yeah. We're not telling anybody anything. Yeah. We're keeping it under wraps. It was having, Buloy. <laughs> you know, we're, we're having these conversations. Yeah. We're having the meetings. Everything is moving. Everything is flowing. Um, job Possible job opportunities mm. are opening up. Um, is there the option to go and study? You know, this and, and, and all of this is going on. We're, we're having conversations with the kids. Yeah. Kids are excited. They're like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, I can really see. Now we're on YouTube and we're we're seeing the life there. We're seeing ourselves hmm. living in Canada. Eventually, we settled on a on a place called um, Alberta in, in Calgary. In uh, yeah. so Calgary in, in, in Alberta, Alberta. Um, and you know, I find a church. I find schools because because I'm really good at finding yeah. places, right? So I find a church, I find schools. I'm like, this is the area we're going to live in. I apply for school. Yeah. Um, and this actually, interestingly, is the time when, um, you know, we came out and we're like, hey, guys, actually, Lerato's going to Bible school. Yes. Lerato's going into ministry and he's going to Bible school, which was actually in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and at the time when we were sharing the news, um, you were meant to. Larato was not supposed to be here right now. He yeah. was. She should have left in August. August beginning and, of August. And, um, to go start school in Calgary, Alberta, and we were going to follow. Yeah, and then. Grrr. Oh, but before we go yeah. to the, grrr, you know, guys, but because God, guys, God in his infinite wisdom, we've made such solid connections. One of my best friends right now, yeah. Lebo Chomi, I love you. She's in Canada. She's in Ottawa. Yeah, she's in Ottawa. And we, I just started speaking to her about wanting to immigrate. And then the next thing we're like the best of friends. I'm like, how did this happen? Yeah. She's literally one of my closest friends. She yeah. is amazing. Great mom, great wife, great friend. I can literally speak to Leba about everything. I feel like I've known her my entire life. And this was in pursuit of us immigrating. So. Yeah. I also want to say on the back of that, yeah. that, you know, how friends rallied around us, Lucy, the one that you and know, is and yeah is how they 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 were like yeah we've got a friend that yeah. side you know let's connect you guys we ended up meeting Balisa yeah. and her husband we like guys like our mm. our community was so supportive yeah. and they yeah. were just like guys go do it you know um and our families were very supportive family was very family supportive. more than mine my mom was just like yay <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna miss you guys i'm gonna but i think because your family has also experienced sure being abroad so it was yeah. just a very easy conversation yeah. to have with them yeah yeah february 2024 man february 2024 27th yeah, 27 yeah. February 2024, Lebone is born. Yeah. And we literally go through a whirlwind. I'm sorry, guys, we're not going to go like into this. Please go to yeah. our Instagram yeah. and whatever and YouTube, actually, because we've told the story. Yeah. But basically, our baby is born with a genetic condition. And guys, please understand mm -hmm. all roads lead to canada listen yo keep on keep on a capri it's no code do you yeah, understand what i'm saying <laughs> yeah like we we passports are there we're working nice. on visas everything like we are going we're, we're going there and we're also imagining how we're going to announce it to the dream team <laughs> yeah. and we're not going to say anything and one day we're just going to be in canada it's going to be like guys guess what do you know what i mean yeah. we got this whole thing planned yeah. out lebon is born and it just throws a spanner in the works. Mm. I mean, outside of the emotional toll that it took, um, our plans, guys, mm. our plans. And it was just like, Lord, what? I start um, uh, making some phone calls, sending out emails, and I learned that, look, the, the health system is already really, really, really inundated, right? They've, they've got a lot. The chances that they're going to 
still allow you guys to come as a family having a child with needs with mm. special needs i don't and i still don't know what the right phrase is mm. i don't i don't like the word special needs or, but what is it no, i don't mind i don't mind it so much anymore yeah. but in the beginning i was just like why <laughs> why you right. know only the special needs <laughs> but now i think i've i've you know okay yeah I've, well you know what we mean right <laughs> but the, that's the that's the acceptable yeah. um term that is used so right. we'll go it's going to make things considerably more difficult for yeah. you guys to come in on top of that there's the expense so what you realize is in this moment we're realizing our privilege at mm-hmm. one point lebone has got five six specialists that she's seeing on yeah. a weekly basis medical aid is taking care of it we oh my gosh just the access and when i and when i say access guys i'm talking about you know for instance in canada um my wife's friend right now um recently got sick it took her 7 days to see a gp Shame, Wait, but then days. I called her Lebo Tlong Kwamanya babe. She's like, no, friend, I actually could have gone and seen my GP, but then she called late and then so got she you. she could have she could have gone sooner because they've got a family doctor. What it doesn't take away yeah. from though is when it comes to seeing a specialist, mm. some people wait three months. Mm. And we're like, okay, but With Lebona, we can't. Yeah. We can't wait three months. It's not, you know, and right now, honestly, at, especially at the time, not that our other, uh, our other daughters were not a consideration, but mm-hmm. she was the biggest consideration because her life is at stake. And yeah. we're just like, we're not willing to risk her life literally for the sake of the pursuit yeah. of going to Canada. Yeah. But what I also love about God, guys, is that, <clears throat> so initially, baby, remember... We actually wanted to immigrate before we gave birth. Yes. So we wanted to, and also if Bonnie was born in Canada, she would be a Canadian citizen and so forth and so on. But really, I feel like God knew that. Not I feel like I know that God knew that it had to happen this way. Yeah. And the amount of growth, guys, that has happened for us in the past seven months, we literally couldn't. We we literally couldn't have written. this um in in the in the script god wrote it so perfectly that our concerns i think we spoke about it in the last um in the last video but i've been speaking about it a lot on my instagram to say my concerns have changed considerably yeah. my perspective has changed my desires have changed after having bonnie and um this would not have happened if lebone you know if we had possibly just gone to canada and maybe ha- i don't know what life was going to look like if we had born there you know yeah. but the amount of work that we are confident that god wants us to do still in south africa yeah. and the nature of work that he wants us to do has been illuminated by lebona's life yeah and um i mean i was talking about how i had dreams from about 10 years ago that i had literally put in a little box and thought i would maybe do i want to do this do i not but then after bone god made it clear that this is what i want you to do the next 20 years or the next 10 years these are legacy building years yeah. and i remember lerato was reminding me baby when you were speaking about um this organization <laughs> this organization hey incubate <laughs> sorry this this organize <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can't remember you must incubate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um this organization Lerato s- said that he once said to me that baby I see you working for this organization. I remember that conversation by yeah. the way, but I've always had a heart for people. I've always wanted to work with people. Yeah. And what has happened is that since Bonnie was born, I'm more concerned about how other people are doing. how other people in our situation are doing yeah. because we have we have so much help you know you the dream team have rallied around us in terms of prayers our friends and families have rallied around us in terms of prayers and support and the love and so forth and so on i'm thinking about we, the specialist that you're talking about lebona has the best care yeah. in the world yeah. now i got to a 
point where I was thinking about mothers and families who have a child like Elibone, who yeah. have a child with uh, a, a disability or um, a child with uh, who is medically complex and do not have the resources. Yeah. So my focus has shifted from, okay, Bone, because we can see, you know, when God says, seek first the kingdom and everything shall be added unto you, mm. he really means it because we aren't sitting at home declaring healing, declaring provision for one. No, we are sitting at home carrying on with the Lord's work. Yeah. And God is taking care of us. He's taking care of our families, taking care of our kids, of Bonne, and giving us the resources that we need yeah. and we require for this journey. So I'm just really, really grateful that God used our pain as a pivot point. Yeah. You know, we were like, ah, we are going. God was like, no, you're not. Yeah. But then revealed himself in such an such amazing way, way. Such a big way. That we are left like really eternally grateful. And I, I think people are, are probably thinking, ah, but how can you guys say you're eternally grateful? You know, you have a child who is medically complex, you know, and so forth and so on. And we're just like, guys, you don't understand what God has done for us in yeah. this season. Yeah. you do, Like you don't understand that also we have had to learn and unlearn certain things that we thought we knew about the kingdom that we thought we knew That's about good. god i mean baby yeah. i was so entitled to life before bonnie sure. i had this entitlement that oh yeah because i remember when bonnie happened we're like ah but lord why us and this yeah. and this and that yeah. and and i feel like we have this entitlement that god has to god is here to serve us yeah God is not here to serve us. The number of days that we have from God, they are a gift. Yeah. The number of days that 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 God um, is giving us the breath that we have in our lungs, mm. we're not deserving. You know, we wake up grumpy, some of us. Oh, I'm tired. I have to go to work. Be grateful that you have work to go to. Yeah. But we don't look at it like that. But what Bona has done for us, she has really amplified our gratitude mm -hmm. she has really opened our eyes up to what the kingdom is about what matters and what matters and who god is in our lives yeah. you know yeah yeah uh, yeah i'd say i'd say as well i was i was absorbed by i was self-absorbed in my ambition sure you know um and and it resulted in me being everywhere at all times and always running and chasing opportunity and grab this and grab that and and really i did an about face uh mm. because I, I i realized a couple of things and it's it's things that we spoke about number one i realized that it's not about me it never was about me it's not about me it's never gonna be about me and my life today is about impacting the lives of other people. You asked me a question a couple of months ago, which has stayed with me. And you said to me, what do you think God is most concerned about? Mm. And I never, I never thought about it. I never asked myself that question. But when I think back and I, and, and I say, gosh, you know, it makes me think about why did God create the world, first of all? Number two. Why is it that God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross mm. so that we would have fellowship with him again? Why was that so important? And so what starts to happen is you start to think about your life just outside of yourself in, in, in the context of your purpose. Yeah. And ultimately, my purpose is to serve people. That's all it is. Mm. And you're going to be anything that 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 comes my way today i i i i i put it through the filter of is it an opportunity to serve people and this is how i ended up in real estate again right i've had opportunities again you know to be on tv and people are like yeah we've got this great movie we'd love you to act in it or whatever and i'm just like you know what if I'm really being honest, that was very self-serving. Sure. I had to be honest with myself about that. It was a difficult thing to be honest about, but I was like, no, this is actually about my ego. When, I, when I'm looking at real estate, I, and guys, I've worked in real estate before. Mm. The difference today is, oh man, I've got, there's something that wakes me up in the morning and it is the prospect of helping people. Wow. It's the prospect of, 
Lerato, you know, this is what we're looking at as a family. We're looking for the end. My wife will tell you, I'm not, this is, I'm not blowing smoke. Mm. I will stay up the whole night to try to help somebody yeah. find a home, yeah. to help somebody get the right investment at the right price, to help somebody, you know, lease the right property, to help somebody find the right buyers at the price that they wanted. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just like, because now this is something that I can really say is not self-serving. Sure. And I celebrate Lebone for, I celebrate God for bringing Lebone into my life where I just realized that, yeah, you don't run Jack. Mm. You don't run this. Sure. Like you, you, again, many of the plans in a man's heart, but only the Lord's purpose will prevail. And I realized that I had all these plans and I went, you know, and I was just, you know, I was almost boastful about the idea that, yeah, I'm going to take my family to Canada, mm. you know, and God was like, hold that thought. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And babe, what I love about what you're saying, a lot of people always ask us what Lebone means to our non Sitswana and Sisutu and Sibedi speaking family, Lebon, it means light. It means to illuminate and which is what she's really done. But what I love about what she's done is that the way we relate to Hagwe and Ruo now. Yeah. Because when you're speaking, my love, you're, you're, two, you are two other daughters. You're speaking about service, right? And how we serve our other children now is very different. Very different. I feel like we have just been awakened, mm. you know, remembering beloved awakened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've, I just feel like our spirits have been awakened, you mm. know, to to really, not that we didn't see our kids, but the way we relate with them now is on such a different level. Yeah. You know, we have an urgency in the home to love, to serve, to care for one another. Yeah. And, I feel like then we had the, the um, what is it, the idea, we thought that, you know, ugh, we still got time. Yeah. We still got time. We can, yes, we can do it tomorrow. We can do this the next day. And then Lebona comes and she gives us this urgency that tomorrow's not promised. Yeah. Right? Tomorrow's not promised. And there's an urgency for us to do kingdom work yeah. there's an urgency for us to serve people because as you're speaking baby i'm like sure so our revelation is actually the same which is service yeah and that's what ministry is about yeah that's what the kingdom is about it's about yeah. serving people for sure and you know now we serve each other in the home with such pleasure and we're intentional and we're intentional, we're intentional you yeah. know um we there's a, there's a pleasure in which we serve one another yeah. and i can see it with the kids as well you know they um what i'm seeing also with hagwe and bonne their relationship has it's a, a bit more wholesome and raw. and raw rather it's a bit more wholesome and i also feel like it's as a result of them being there for bonne sure. it has deepened their compassion and it's and it's re, it's shifted their focus. It's shifted their focus. Yeah. And it's also I feel like they're more um, empathetic. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Um. They they want to do things for for Bonnet, but they also want to do things for each other. Yeah. I mean, now Hagwe, something like wanting to do Ruo's hair. Yeah. Hagwe was just on her own, doing you know, her doing thing. her own thing. She's a preteen now. But now she's she's thinking a lot more about her sisters and how yeah. she can serve them. Yeah. And, you know, with the, with, with the Ruo as well, vice versa. And with us, baby. Yeah. I mean, we, guys, since Lebon has been born, ne? We literally, and you were saying, baby, when you're speaking to Dinewa this afternoon, that it is really by the grace of God that he's graced us with so much peace in our home. Yeah. Like we literally, I mean, today you were annoyed with me when we were coming to shoot because I had given <laughs> the Uber guy the wrong ad address and whatnot. And I could see Lerat was getting a bit worked up because he was also dealing with queries and so forth. And the way it just diffused, I was just like, ah, yeah, oh man, yeah. And, yeah. and then it was just, phew, and diffused. we carried on. You know, we also have that urgency. Because our concerns have changed. Our concerns have changed. And it's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like, these are nonsensical issues. Yeah. They, 
there are bigger things yeah. that we need to, you know yeah. what I mean? So my prayer is that God would just give you bigger issues. Eish. You understand? No, you want no, them to have like, <laughs> No, really. Just so that, because, yeah. because the enemy wants to distract you. Yeah. The enemy wants to distract you with yes. things that are just nonsensical. They've got nothing yeah. to do with kingdom, nothing to do with purpose, nothing to do with people, yeah. nothing to do with growth, nothing, mm. nothing. Nothing. You, you, you're concerned. Uh, let me not make examples, but <laughs> just nonsensical things. And, yeah. and and sometimes when you're just in a place where you're like, Lord, I've got nothing. Mm. I, I've got nothing left. That's when he goes, all right, right, let me step in. So where are we today? Today, I am working in real estate. I'm going to let my wife uh, let you know yeah. what she's up to. Today, I'm in real estate, loving my job, love the people that I work with, love working with clients, loving work, working with people, difficult and easy and <laughs> great. I'm just great with people. So yeah. love that. Um, still going to Bible school, except I'm going to be doing it here uh, as of 2025, February. I'm going to be going to Bible school here. Um Always looking for opportunities to serve, to love on people, to tell people about the love of God, love the place that I'm in, and I'm looking forward to what the next, what my next looks like. Amazing. So for me, sure, you're like, what are we doing now? My mind is like, yeah, yeah. but I also wanted to finish off what you were talking about, about distractions um, as we wrap up. Guys, the enemy does want to distract us, but I was saying to you the other day, I was like, but baby, the enemy is not smart, eh? Because he knows that pain is a pivot point. But I guess maybe that's not everyone's story, right? Yeah. But when the Bible speaks about how what the enemy um, meant for evil, God will use it for good. And this is what's happening in our lives right now. Yeah. And there was a, there was someone who DM'd me. I had Libana in our story in my stories. And someone was asking a question. They're like, you know, ask Petu, are you praying for complete healing for Bonne? And I said to them, I said, you know what? Um, we are believing for a lot for Bonne. You know, we trust in God for a lot, but we don't spend our days praying for healing and fasting for healing because that can also be a distraction because yeah. then you start idolizing the healing and then you start sure. idolizing, sure. um, you know, the things that God can do for you and not keeping your eyes on God and on kingdom work, right? Yes. And on his will, his, will, his perfect will. Which is will, our whole podcast right? that we're going to talk and, about. And, and, w and when, you, when you surrender, mm -hmm. that's when you can you know, focus on other things. I was saying to, to you, baby, like my focus right now is holiness, yeah. is pursuing Christ and holiness and, you know, being consecrated and returning to God, returning to the word and other things God adds onto your life. Health, health is nothing to God. It's just like, ah, do you know what I mean? Healing is nothing to God. So for me, that's where I am in this season of my life. And also another thing is I'm also studying, studying um, psychology, imagine, <laughs> you know. So my so background, cool. my thank you, my love. So my background is marketing. I studied, uh, um, I have a marketing degree. I was in corporate for many years doing marketing. Um, I did um, digital marketing um, for a lot of blue chip companies. And I really think that I was, I was good at it, you know, until, oh, thank you, my love, yeah. until I decided to leave corporate again. <laughs> I know people are just like, ah, you left again and but I remember baby very clearly when I was in corporate um, doing marketing I, I was always drawn to the um, NGO space I'd always you know ask if there are any roles in the foundations and wanting to do work there but at the time there wasn't a big cause that I wanted to focus on or felt led to focus on. And now God has spoken to me about a lot of things in the health space, in the community space, in the NGO space. And um, big things are definitely Big Blueing. things like one. <laughs> so guys, that's a little yeah. bit of our, of our story. Not a little bit. I mean, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's what has transpired over the past couple of months. Yeah. And uh, we thought we should just let you guys in. Um, thank you for rocking with us. Thank yeah. you for for 
for always being there. Thank you for your love and support. Yeah. We really appreciate you. I think the biggest thing is when we go out, guys. Sure. Like sure. Yeah. And and really <laughs> what we feel is the love of God. Yeah. That's really yeah. what it is. It's like, man, God loves us so much through you yeah you know um so we just want to love and appreciate you and thank you for hanging out with us today um isn't it funny how my love when we go out i know our time is up our videographer was like yeah. time is up <laughs> but isn't it funny that every time we go out i'm like baby they really watch us like like people my wife is like taken aback for me every God, time. i never get used to it i promise you i'm just like you guys watch us. I'm and not I'm thinking like, about the time. I'm thinking about this Uber Eats that we ordered, and I'm not sure <laughs> if it's being checked on right now because they're, they're not here yet. Okay. But baby, it's such a it's it's such a humbling experience when we yeah. go out and people say that they watch our podcast and and listen to what we we have to impart. Because I'm because this is impartation, and I take impartation very seriously, yeah. which is why um, in the past I. I have been saying no to a lot of speaking engagements. I've been saying no and Lerato's like, but babe, you're such a great speaker. And I was saying to Lerato, I just don't feel like it's time mm -hmm. for me to speak. I just felt God saying to me, it's not time yet. It's like when Jesus was like, woman, <laughs> what do you want from me? My time has not yet come. Yes. And I've been saying no for, for many years, you know, and it's such a humbling experience to, to actually have people that are saying, you know, you guys are impacting our lives in such a positive way. And we don't take it lightly. It's, yeah. it's such a humbling experience. And we are eternally grateful to you, the dream team, for praying for us because we do really feel strong, baby. We are, it feels like we're stronger than before. Yeah. You know, when the song says, we're the max and we're only getting better. Better. And it's because of the dream team, your love, your support, your prayers, and you, my love. Ah, stop it. You know, you guys, well, rather get a pillar of strength. How about a pillar of strength? <laughs> This is a pillar. Baby, you've been really amazing. Oh, thank you, my you've babe. Been really phenomenal. Yeah. And sure. I always say that you never know how strong you are until you actually go through something. Yeah. And like my wife just I I stand in amazement every day, mm -hmm. you know. Um it's Jesus, not, man. Not so no. much at I don't want to say at her strength, but mm. like what God has built inside of her. I'm sure. just like I I I never imagined that I would witness this side of her. Sure. And yeah, it's just been phenomenal. So I love you. baby, thank you. Thank you for for staying in the ring. Sure. You know, like we like to talk about. Thank you for staying in the ring and and believing and and being vulnerable um sure. and being strong. Thank you. And and for trusting me when you're not so strong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um all of that like we're just I feel like we're doing life, man. We, you know what I mean? We are. Like we're doing life and mm -hmm. life ebbs and flows. Yeah. You know, um, you've got great seasons. You've got really difficult yeah. seasons. But always remember that all things work together for good. Yeah. And it's crazy because one thing that we spoke about, you see now, I thought we were wrapping up. Now that I know that our food is under control, yeah. now I'm not in a rush. So, so it's crazy to me because I start to then realize that when you go through it, that's when scripture comes alive. Yeah. Yeah. You think you understand things until you go through it. And then you're like, oh, because you are literally hanging on to every word that comes out of God's mouth. Mm -hmm. And and it comes alive. And you're like, oh, I thought I understood. Yeah. I thought I understood what that scripture meant. But oh no, not now now I I have an intimate knowledge it's tangible what that means yeah you know what i mean and the revelation that comes out of your pain is sure. crazy sure if 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 for nothing else the biggest thing the biggest thing biggest 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 which my wife spoke about is the art of surrender man yeah just that's that's where i'm at i'm like deal no deal me i'll mm. i'll go a hundred for all my clients i've got no control 
whether it sells, it doesn't, somebody tries to hustle you that you've sure. got no control. Give it all to God. Give it all to God. I pray over all of my properties. Mm. I pray over all of my transactions. I him making a sec a success of it or not a success, it's all God. My job is faithfulness, holiness. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I love how you pray over the properties and the land, yeah. the lands that you yeah. sell, and you pray for the families and, and you and walk. God the and, land and God and, did such a cool thing guys yeah. my very first listing mm. was a piece of land you know that i listed after i posted it 30 minutes it was sold i sure. was like i don't Faith. that's grace that's favor yeah I'm not walking around like yeah no i'm mm. like god like yeah. man thank yeah. you you know why because it's all for his glory yeah. so when you know we, we we do that transaction and i'm able to testify and say guys this is what god did for me he can do it for yeah. you the money that comes from there we make sure that we tithe mm -hmm. and then we go okay how am i going to use these funds to better my family so that the glory of the kingdom huh? yeah simple mm -hmm. thing and how do we better communities yeah. how do we better lives mm -hmm. sure Guys, rukudile, rukudile. Not like the school of say. Mar urukudisi te. Mar urukudisi. Urukudisi te. Oh, why not? Such a cool name, those right? Ones. Yeah, Urukudisi. baby, th this is like the 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 school of a hard knocks, bruh. Yeah. Where we just like, hey, yeah, man. Is that mess around and find out? All right, beautiful people. Thank you for hanging out with us once again. Yeah. You know what it is. My name is Narata Macheta. This is my beautiful wife, Petula Macheta. Macheta. One time. <laughs> it sounds like, sorry, I'm Balin Tlapo. And, and I'm, I'm a housekeeper. housekeeper. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We love you. We love you. We adore you. We pray for you. You guys are amazing. Thank you for hanging out with us. One time, too real. Oh, yes. Peace and blessings, people. We are. Love you.